Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for week number 36 of Live with Annie. We hope that you've enjoyed these weekly presentations as much as we have. Last week, we began the discussion of choosing supplies for our projects, sharing tips for picking soft and stable, fabrics, and thread. We also shared info about our great new thread color chart. You'll love it for matching colors of Superior Threads SoFine number 50 and Aurafil threads to all 48 colors of our zippers, as well as all 14 colors of our mesh and fold-over elastic. If you missed last week's episode or want to watch it again, remember that all of the episodes of Live with Annie are available online. You can watch them on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, or by going to byannie.com live. I usually find it easiest to go to the byannie.com live link as everything is in one place. The current episode is right at the top and there's a drop down menu for all the past episodes. You'll even find a chat function. We'll put up the link to make it easy for you to find. To thank everyone for joining us last week, our giveaway included the pattern and supplies for flipping out. This included the flipping out pattern and enough soft and stable, fusible interfacing, zippers, mesh, and fold over elastic to make both sizes of the bag. The lucky winner was Emily Leachman. Emily has responded to our message and will have her package on its way to her right away. We can't wait to see the flipping out bags that you make, Emily. Emily made a number of comments during the Biani Live event last week, one of which was that she joined the Biani Bag Makers group on Facebook after our mention the previous week. I noticed last night that they're up to over 10,000 members now. Congratulations and thanks go to Randy and everyone in the group. Again, if you'd like to connect with other Biani enthusiasts, we highly recommend the group and we'll put up a link so that you can find it on Facebook. Again, the group is not affiliated with Biani at all, but I am a member and I have really enjoyed seeing the projects that everyone is making. I have also been really impressed by how positive and helpful everyone is. In her comment on last week's live, Emily said that a member of the bag makers group had pointed out the Biani copyright policy and its limitations. Emily said that she'd been unaware of the notice and asked if I could give more details about it this week. So let's take a minute and talk about Biani's copyright notice. At the bottom of the first page of each Biani pattern, you will find a copyright notice with this text. This pattern is protected by a copyright and is intended for the personal use of the retail purchaser only. Permission is granted to make up to 10 items for gifts or for sale. If you want to make more than 10, please contact Biani LLC for permission. If projects are made in a classroom setting, each student must purchase a pattern. Photocopying and all other types of reproduction, including mechanical, electronic, computerized, or digital are prohibited without the written consent of Biani LLC. Please respect the time and energy it took to make this pattern. So, basically our copyright pattern, our copyright on our patterns, gives permission for the retail customer who buys the pattern to use it to make items for their personal use. We ask that you re respect the significant time and energy that goes into each Biani pattern and not copy it or share it with friends. We know that sewists are generous people, so the notice also gives outright permission for you to make up to 10 items using the pattern for gifts or for sale. This means you can make up to 10 items without contacting us at all. To clarify, if you are working from a pattern that has more than one size, you can make 10 of each size. So for instance, 10 each of all four sizes of the project bags. Personally, I've found that once I make that many of anything, I'm ready to move on and make something else. However, you may want to make more, and the notice continues to say, 
If you want to make more than 10 bags, please contact Biennial LLC for permission. We review additional requests to make additional items on a case-by-case -case basis. Our main consideration is that we don't want someone mass producing items from our patterns. If you are selling items made using Biani patterns, we do ask that you credit us as the designer of the pattern. So on the listing for the item and on a tag attached to the item, we ask that you include the name of the pattern used, my name as designer, and our website. So for example, let's say you made a travel bag using our Ultimate Travel Bag 2.0 pattern and you are selling it on an Etsy site. In the description of the bag on your site and on a tag attached to the bag, you would include this info. This travel bag was made using the Ultimate Travel Bag 2.0 pattern designed by Annie Unrine of www.byannie.com. So, I hope that helps clarify the copyright notice and if you need to find all those details, you can go to the Frequently Asked Questions section of our website, which again is on the bottom menu bar of each page under Customer Service, and you'll find all of that information listed there as well. You'll also find lots of other great info there, including the new thread color chart, so be sure and check it out. I'm going to have a quick drink and then we're going to move on. Somebody commented last week that every time I stop and take a drink, they do too. So we'll, we'll try and stay hydrated during this, this uh, session. All right, so today we're going to continue our discussion of color. Last week we covered how we chose fabric, soft and stable, and thread. But once we have the fabrics picked, then our next step is to pick zippers, mesh, fold over elastic, hardware, and strapping for the project. And there are just so many options, uh, but I'm going to share a few tips for how we approach this. So let's start by talking about zippers. And I'm going to grab a few zippers to put up on the table. All right, so first and foremost, we recommend that you use Biani's number 4.5 handbag zippers for your projects. Their extra wide tape makes inserting them much easier and it also gives a decorative element to your project. They have extra large slides that are easy to grab and those slides have big holes so it's easy to put in a fabric zipper pull. Because these zippers are made of nylon coil, they are easy to cut and sew through and they're going to be strong and durable for extended wear. Note that the number 4.5 refers to the measurement in millimeters across the teeth of the zippers. So a number 4.5 zipper is larger than a number 3 zipper, which is the typical zipper we use in skirts and dresses, and it's a little bit smaller than a number 5 zipper. We shared a lot of tips for using zippers in our week number 17 of Facebook Live. We also filmed a great Zippers Are Easy video, which you'll find in the public videos section of your digital library at Biani.com. It includes lots of tips for installing zippers easily and for making zippers of any length and style. So if you need help with those steps, be sure to watch that video. For today, we're just going to focus on choosing colors. So we have created a really great collection of colors at Biani.com. I'm going to grab this zipper ring so I can show you some of the options we have. So we've got zippers in and we've got them in several sizes. So we start the smallest zipper that we carry is a 24 inch single slide. Then we go to a 30 inch double slide and this is a luggage style. And each of these sizes comes in 48 terrific colors, which you can see on this ring, and we'll lay those out in a minute. Then we also carry 40 inch zippers, which are obviously a little bit longer. These are also double slide luggage style. And we carry a product called Zippers by the Yard. These two come in 32 colors. So again, the 24 and 30 come in 48 colors. The 40 inch and zippers by the yard come in 32 colors. 
Zippers by the yard include four yards of zipper chain, and with that you get 16 color-coordinated slides. We also have multi-packs in our zippers by the yard in black and white, and these are black or white zipper tape with 16 multicolored slides. These are really fun to use, and I'm not sure if I'm showing anything today using that, but we've got lots of models where we have done that, so you can check those out. You can find a color card that lists all these options at our website. So you just go to buyany.com, click on the zippers tab, and it will go th um, bring it right up. One thing to note is that the colors that are available in 40 inch and zippers by the yard are marked with stars. So if the color you're looking at does not have a star after the name of the color, that means it's not available in the 40 inch or the zippers by the yard. One thing to remember is that colors viewed on your screen or printed on paper aren't always true to the color. Um, but you can add one of these zipper color cards to your order at Biani for just a penny, and you will also find the color card printed in each of our catalogs. So this is our current catalog, and we try to always put it on the last page. So there you've got the color card. It also shows which colors are available in the mesh, and those are also available in fold-over elastic. So lots of places where you can find um, what the colors are. So for best color matching, we like to have actual zipper tape. So we suggest that you assemble a zipper stash just like you have a fabric stash so that you'll always be able to audition colors when you're gathering supplies for a new project. And we keep a ring of 24-inch zippers that are in all 48 colors right next to our cutting table. We took the tags off the bag, stapled it to the top of the zipper, put them on a ring, and that makes it really easy to lay them out on our fabric and audition choices as we're working. So I'm going to grab a piece of uh, fabric here, put some of these away so we've got room to work. Oh, I'm not sure. I think I forgot to mention this. We also have zipper slides available in all 48 colors, and we make sets of those um, in groups of 12. This is our bright set, so we have lights, brights, darks, and neutrals. Um, we also have spring and fall. Spring combines the darks and neutrals. Um, no, fall does. Spring combines the lights and brights. So those are handy if you want to have extra um, slides on hand. So. Um, Again, we keep our zippers on a ring so that we can easily see the colors, but another option is to cut little swatches of the zipper tape and attach them to a printed zipper card. And we're going to put a picture up of the card that Leslie made. She attached the zipper tape using double-sided double tape, and she says that she keeps the color card in a six by nine pattern bag so that the swatches don't fall off when she slides it into her road trip a bag that she made to hold all of her color cards. And Leslie says she uses her zipper color card when she's first trying to decide what color of zipper she wants to use for a project. Once she thinks she knows the color, then she pulls out her ring to confirm. So if your space is limited or having too many choices is just overwhelming, that's a really great suggestion to just use the card. And Leslie mentioned that she also does the very same thing with thread. So she starts with the color card that has the actual thread wound on it, and once she's decided generally what color she wants to use, then she pulls the actual spool to verify that she's got the one she wants. So when you're looking at zippers, there's just so many options and so many ways that you can do it. And I'm just going to grab a piece of fabric here um, that we had left over from some projects what, that we were doing. And, and I'll kind of show you what we do when we get ready to um, decide on zipper colors for something. So basically, we usually just take our, our thing of zippers and we lay that out, and then we start pulling out colors that we think might work. This has a, a pretty turquoise in it, so we could lay that on there. Um, we could lay the blue on there. There's some golden yellows on there. Uh, we could try some of those on there. We basically just start laying out all the various options that we think might work and then go from there. 
So the things that you have to think about as you're doing it is, do you want it to blend in with your project? So we've got this little set of clam up bags that we made. We used a variety of fabrics in greens and, and turquoises. But as you can see, we picked our emerald color of zippers and it blends in nicely with all of them. We could have picked different colors for everyone, um, but that, that's a great way to do it. So to pick one color that goes with all of them and it just kind of blends in and doesn't call a whole lot of attention to it. On this one, we made the zippers more of a focal point. So we kind of pulled out one of the colors that was in this fabric, but then it, you know, it really contrasts with the other bags. By picking just one color of zippers for the whole set, we're able to tie them in. We also picked one coordinating fabric and that also helped to tie it in and picked that to kind of match our zipper. So, you know, you can make it so that you don't really notice the zipper or you can make it so that it, it's really visible. It's, it's really up to you. On this large take a stand, we used a zipper that really blended well with the fabric. That enables the focus to be on Tula's awesome sewing machines that we fussy cut for the front of the bag. Um, on this one, we picked a color that really contrasts on the small one. So that makes it really show up and you really notice the zipper on that bag. Not only does it add interest, but it also helps our customers see the zippers more easily when they're trying to decide how everything goes together. So you may notice that on many of our models, we tend to make the zipper more of a focal point. That just helps us if we're talking to someone on the phone and trying to explain how the bag goes together because they can really see the zipper. Um, that's one of the choices we use, but certainly not one that you need to consider if you're not doing that. So if you're doing a project that uses more than one zipper, you've got even more options there. So I'm gonna put this up on the hook and we're going to look at this set of project bags or pocket packers. All right, so on this you can say, do you wanna use the same color for everything? Do you wanna stay in the same color family for everything to tie it together? On this bag, so this is our pattern called Pocket Packers, and this is the style four pack, bag with four different pockets. We couldn't decide on just exactly which color of blue to use, so we decided to do all of them. So we did kind of an ombre effect going from light to dark and featured each color on there. We really liked how that turned out. On this one, we added a little excitement by varying the zipper colors and then we also used different colors of zipper pulls for each one. So we basically took the same colors of pulls as we had on the zippers, but we switched them up and put them on different zippers to just add a fun pop of color and interest to each one. On this bag, we couldn't decide whether we wanted to use blue zippers or whether we wanted to use white zippers, and we solved the problem by just separating the zipper tape and combining them so that each zipper has two different colors of tape. Again, it's a really fun way to add interest but still tie things together. So as you can see by looking at these, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing zipper colors. Just pick what makes your heart sing and gives the effect that you want. All right, time for another drink. If you are just joining us, today we are talking about choosing supplies for your projects, and we started by talking about how to choose zipper colors. We would love to hear how you pick zippers for your project too. Do you prefer zippers that blend, or do you like them to contrast? Do you ever mix things up by changing the pulls, and have you ever tried combining two different colors of zippers, or two colors of zipper tape? Uh, we'd love to see pictures, and, and your tips, so please share those in the comments section. We really love hearing and seeing what you do. All right, next we're going to talk about mesh and fold over elastic. So again, I'm gonna put this piece of fabric up here. I think we're going to look at that again.
All right, so Biani's Lightweight Mesh um, is what we use in many of our um, patterns for pockets. Uh, it gives you a pocket that you can see through, it's got some ventilation, it has a little bit of stretch, and it doesn't add any bulk to your project. So we have uh, mesh available in 14 colors. We also have fold over elastic in the same colors. And we love using the fold over elastic for bindings on pockets primarily. Um, fold over elastic is really great um, for bindings even if you're doing a fabric pocket. So here is a, a little bag, one of our out and about backpacks and we used the fold over elastic on the inside to gather the pocket. So you can use it on pockets made of mesh, fabric, even vinyl, and it's just an easy one-step process, even if you're making a gathered pocket as we did on this project. So you just cut your fabric longer, your elastic a little bit shorter, stretch the elastic as you go, and sew it in place. Our fold over elastic is 20 millimeters wide, which is a little bit more than three quarters of an inch. You can find fold over elastic in narrower widths, such as 15 millimeters or about three eighths of an inch, but we really prefer the wider width. And you really wouldn't think that an eighth of an inch would make much difference, but the wider width really is easier to attach. And in our opinion, it really gives a nice finished appearance as well. We talked about both mesh and fold over elastic in week number four of our Facebook Live. So be sure to check that out if you want more info about techniques for using these products. Um, Biani's Lightweight Mesh and Fold Over both come in 14 fun colors and they are dyed to match our zippers that have the same name. So these are the 14 colors of zippers that match our mesh and if you look at any of these you're going to see that that the color is really close so you can really be confident that when you pick the mesh and zippers and fold over they're all going to match so this is another instance where it's really helpful to have a sample of each color of mesh and fold over elastic so that you can audition the colors with your fabric and compare options so we've cut small squares of the mesh and put tags on them. Same thing we've done for the fold over elastic and we put those on rings. To make it easy for you, we don't have fold over elastic on rings, but we do have these new mesh, mesh sample packs that include all 14 colors in a handy pack. And this makes it really easy for you to audition colors and compare your options. So when we're ready to audition, um, let's talk about that next. And I'm really, it's really surprising to me sometimes that the color that I think is going to be the obvious choice gets bumped off by something completely different. And we're going to look at this um, set of pocket packers that we made. Let me clear some of these things off so we got a little room to work here. So we started with this fabric for our pocket packers. And my first thought when I looked at that is that either apple green or dandelion for the yellow would be the best options for this. So when we got ready to decide, we laid a piece of apple green on, we laid a piece of dandelion on, and then we started playing with other options. And I think we looked at parrot blue because of the turquoise in there. We looked at black because there was a fair amount of black in there. Uh, we used, looked at pewter. We looked at lots of different ones. So as we looked at those, we started making decisions. So the first thing we looked at was black and we just felt like it made it too dark. You couldn't see the colors that were underneath. On the parrot blue, we felt like it really obscured the fabric and kind of the same thing for the the dandelion and the apple green, both of those made you, especially the dandelion, made you focus on the mesh and not really the notice the fabric below. So the next one we tried on there was the pewter. And in the end, we decided that pewter was the perfect choice because it really enhanced the fabrics on both sides and it allowed the colors to show through. 
So if you look at this set of bags, we use this fabric on one side, this on the other, and we could use the pewter mesh on each of those and have it coordinate and, and we didn't have to have two different colors or three different colors of mesh to make the, the bags because we alternated the fabric back and forth. So the other thing to know about mesh is that it, because there is more empty space than really fabric in this, um, you know, you've got a lot of air there in between that. So you're going to find that mesh is kind of a chameleon. It's going to change its color to blend with a piece of fabric. So again, if I was looking at colors to put on this one, my first choice might be either purple or lipstick, but if I grab this packet, if I'm in the store and I'm looking at it and I hold that up to that, I'm gonna say, eh, no, I don't think those are gonna work. I think those are just way too dark. But keep in mind that this is many layers of mesh all folded together, and when you take it out and view it as just a single layer, which is what you'll have when, you're so, when you sew your project together, you're going to see that either one of those could be a really good choice. All right. show you these. So just like with zippers, when you're working with mesh, you can pick a color that blends in. As we did on these two bags, we picked a purple to blend with the purple there, a turquoise to blend with the turquoise and the straps. But on this small one, we picked something totally different, or this medium-sized one. Uh, we picked something that, you know, really is very minimally in the fabric, but gives you a really strong pop of color. So again, the choice is totally up to you as to which ones you do. And, and as you can see, the same thing, actually, I got off track there. I was talking originally about the, the mesh, but obviously the fold over elastic brings another dimension here. You can see that the same way on using the fold over. So on this undercover, we picked a color that blended with the mesh, blended also with the fabric. On this one, we picked a totally different color that really isn't in this fabric or this mesh at all, um, but yet it blends in with the front. So we try to pick colors that tie things together, but may coordinate, may blend, or may contrast depending on our mood, really. So it, it, you know, we could pick out fabrics and supplies for these projects next week and, and make totally different choices. On this little running with scissors, we had a whole lot of fun, and we did all, all kinds of colors. So the fabric that we used for the main fabric had all this variety of fabrics in it. It came in on the inside, too, so when we picked the fold-over elastic, um, we did a different color for each one, which makes it really, really fun. The other thing to know about fold over elastic is that it has two sides. It has a, so it's folded with the shiny side out. Um, the other side is matte, and you can use either side just by folding it with the side that you prefer on the outside. You're going to get a very different look from the shiny side than the matte side. Um, so, you know, look at both before you do. And you can see an example here. I don't know if you can really see that on the screen, but this one we did with the shiny side out. This one we did with the matte side out. And on some of the colors, um, it's even, I think especially like on the natural, the, the uh, difference is a lot more noticeable. So if you've got something you want a little more bling, I like to use the shiny side. If I want something a little more sub subdued, a lot of times I do the, the um, matte side. So either one works just depending on how you fold it. Keep in mind too that if using mesh or fold over elastic is new to you, our week number four Facebook Live uh, gave a lot of tips for working with both of those and you're also going to find a lot of tips for using them in the add-on video for our free pattern Call Me. 
So this is a really great little project to learn all sorts of Biani basic techniques, and it's part of our Biani Basics series, which you'll find on our website, again, Biani.com. To find that, just search for Call Me, or you can click on the Patterns tab and scroll down to the Biani Basics section. And if you do that, make sure that you download the pattern or you add it to your cart so that you can download it and also get the add-on video too. So those are two separate products. Make sure you're um, doing ordering both of them so you get both to work with. All right. If you're just joining us, our topic today is choosing fabrics and other components for your projects. And we've covered how we choose zippers, mesh, and fold over elastic. We have just a few more decisions to make before we can start sewing our project. So let's talk next about the color of strapping and hardware we want to use. So here I've got some hardware. I've got strapping. So when I started making purses and bags, I spent way too much time at the local stores trying to find the perfect color of strapping to use for my bag. And all too often I went home disappointed because I couldn't find something to match well. So it didn't take me very long to figure out that if I could make my handles and straps out of fabric rather than strapping, I would always be able to have the perfect match. However, a strap made just of fabric didn't have the sturdy stability that I wanted for long-lasting wear. So we developed several methods to reinforce our fabric straps with strapping, interfacing, or soft and stable to ensure that they would wear well while also being comfortable. We covered many of those techniques in our Facebook Live in week number 18. We also talk about many of the techniques in our Carry On Handles and Straps video which you'll find in the public video section of your digital library. So be sure and check out all of those if you need help with technique. Again, for now, we're just going to talk about color choices. Obviously, since our strapping is going to be covered with fabric, we don't really need to pay too much attention to it. So we've got one inch and one and a half inch hardware and strapping, and we um, carry both of these in black, or in white. We use black if our handle or strap fabric is dark. We use white when it's not. Black is going to gray down anything that has white or light colors, so we will usually end up using white the majority of the time. But again, depending on the colors you're going to use, it's nice to have those on hand. Now it's time to decide what color of hardware will best complement our project. And I'm just going to dump some of these out so we can look at some choices. All right, so at Biani, we carry hardware in two sizes, one inch and one and a half inch and in three colors. So we have antique brass, black metal, and nickel. Our hardware is beautifully finished. It's not just simply die cast or bent wire. So this gives you really smooth lines, no rough edges, and a really high quality look and feel. You will really love how Biani hardware embellishes your bag. I have found that choosing a color of hardware is really a personal decision. I have definitely found people who only like nickel and others who only like antique brass. Personally, we think it's a little more fun to have a bit more variety. And I'm going to show you some examples using some switchback bags that we recently made. So one thing that we have kind of discovered is that if our fabric is has cool tones like blues and and you know the lighter cool tones the nickel really goes well with that and we found that the antique brass works really well with warmer tones and we consider the black metal to be a really great neutral 
and especially if our project has any black in it, we'll often pick the black um, as being perfect for that. So when we're ready to decide, we will take all three of the colors and lay them out on the project and see how they look. And I think you can agree that on this particular fabric, antique brass really brings out the tones that are in that fabric. On this one, we easily could have picked, I think, nickel would have looked really nice with that. The black looks nice with that. Even the antique brass could work with that. So again, it's very much a personal choice. Um, the decision is yours. Pick what you like and, you know, base it on that. But having all the colors there to be able to lay them out and look at the options really makes it easier. If these were normal times, at this point, I would tell you about the bundles that we have available for many of our projects. You may remember me mentioning them, mentioning them in several of our previous Facebook Live episodes. Bundles included all the Biani supplies that you'd need for a particular project. Soft and stable, zippers, mesh, fold over elastic, strapping, hardware, whatever you needed that we carried at Biani would be included in that bundle. And we designed those to make it easy for you to purchase everything you need for a project on one screen. You could pick colors for everything and get a discount for buying it all. Customers loved them and we did too. However, as you may have noticed, at the end of July, we transitioned to a new accounting system. It was a much needed upgrade that has taken us into the modern world, but it continues to present us with new challenges every day. As I was working with Casey to export products from the old system to the new system, he made it very clear to me that we had to be extra, extra careful when it came time to set up the bundles. Due to the, all the possible variations, he had discovered that there are over a million different variations just for the A Place for Everything bundle. Who knew that when you consider all the possible ways of combining colors of zippers, mesh, fold-over elastic hardware, strapping, soft and stable, and so forth, there were so many variations. Anyway, he explained that if we didn't set up the product in exactly the right way, we could inadvertently add all those million variations as new products, and fixing that would not be fun. Needless to say, I got the message, I did not argue, and um, I, I left it at that. He also said that just trying to create all those options would probably crash our system, and we certainly don't want that. So due to that dilemma, we basically decided at that point to hold up, hold off on setting up bundles. And because we are still trying to learn the basics of the system and get all the back orders filled that have accumulated over the past months with our supply chain issues, we just haven't had a chance to get back to the bundles. But we do plan to get there. We do plan to have bundles again. It's just going to take us a while. So please be patient. We will get there. Yeah, I hope that this and last week's program have been helpful to you as you pick the fabrics and supplies for your project. Again, please remember the projects we showed were made using our choices on the particular day that we made them. You may want something completely different. There are so many options, and as we said before, if you like it, it's the right choice. So pick colors that make you happy and have fun sewing. As always, be sure to check with your favorite local quilt shop to get the fabrics, patterns, and supplies for your projects. If they don't have them, remind them that they can order all Biani products directly from us or from their favorite distributor. Let's all do our part to help keep our local quilt shops strong and successful. Remember, too, that if you are looking for inspiration, you can find all the models we showed today, along with hundreds more, in the photo gallery at our website. And Jake is going to walk through some of this with me because I want to show you some things that are there. So to do that, just go to Biani.com and then click on the tab that says Photo Contest Gallery. You'll find it on the top menu bar. 
Once you click on that, that will take you to a page that has all the entries that you and other Biani makers have submitted to our monthly photo contest. You can filter the list by pattern name and more, so it is a really great place to get ideas for new projects. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who submits pro photos to the monthly contest. We are in the process right now of picking winners for August, and I can tell you it is a brutal job. Uh, Brooke asked us to pick three for the top prize, and it is so hard, as there are so many awesome submissions. I have to confess that my list this time was definitely more than three. So I said, these are the ones I like. You guys are going to have to decide. But the wonderful thing about this photo gallery is that all of the submissions are there, along with the maker's story. So if you want some inspiration, it's a really great place to go. But that's not all that you can get to on this page. Beyond the photos submitted to the photo contest, on the left side of the page, you're going to see a link that says Buy Annie Models. And when you click on that, you are going to find hundreds of images of projects that we've made. At last count, we've made oh, almost 1,900 models of patterns, and many of those models are sets that include more than one piece. So we have actually made over 3,300 individual pieces. That's a lot of sewing. The default setting sorts them by date made, so you're going to see our most recent models at the top. And, and as on the other list, you can filter it in many ways. So you can filter it by pattern name, fabric line, fabric designer or company. So if you have a particular fabric that you want to use, it's a really great place to go and get some ideas. Note too, if you are a store, these images are really great for sharing on your e-commerce site. You can use them to promote classes or fabrics on your social media. There's so many ways you can use them. And to do that, just click on one of the tiles where you'll see the images larger, and then click on the additional photos link to access even more images of the project. We love it when you share our photos with your customers. All right, um, Trevor has posted a question. Someone said, I'm nervous about cutting my zippers because the coils are metal. How do you suggest I cut my zippers? That is the reason why we use nylon coil zippers, because it is not that easy to cut a zipper that's metal. It's also not easy to sew through it. So I would say get some paper scissors or some of your older scissors and cut through the tape. And then, you know, maybe just try cutting between the teeth. Um, but be really careful when you sew with zippers that are metal. Because again, if you hit that with your needle, you're gonna break a needle really quickly. So I would probably go, try and go over the, the things. But that is the reason why Biani zippers are all nylon coil. Easy to cut, easy to sew through. Let's move on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week. As many of you know, each February we host a local quilt shop contest. And during that month, we encourage you to vote for your favorite quilt shop and share a little bit about what makes them special. To continue the fun and support all year round, each week we highlight a store and some of their voter submissions during Live with Annie. This week we are headed to Colorado to feature, oh, boy, my mouth doesn't want to work all of a sudden. I think it's time for a drink. Ah, that's better. So this week we're headed to Colorado to feature Owl's Nest Quilters in Grand Junction. Owl's Nest is the only authorized brother dealer on the western slope of Colorado, and they carry a variety of machines to suit your needs and wants. Virginia said, Carol has a wonderful selection of fabrics and she keeps up with the new fabric lines. She is always willing to support the community with donations and special events. Classes are fun and provide a safe environment for all. Dolores recognized Owl's Nest as having all the attributes that make a quilt shop special. Supply, classes, friendliness, kindness, respect, helpfulness, and smiles and laughter. Owl's Nest has a fun Biani trunk show on display in their store through the month of September, and they have scheduled several in-person Biani classes 
Bowl Me Over 2.0, Ditty Bags, and I'll Drink to That. So if you're in the Western Slope area or want to take a fun road trip to beautiful Colorado and want to take a hands-on class or see Biani models up close and personal, be sure to check them out. We have got another fun contest announcement this week. Uh, did you know that September is National Sewing Month? To celebrate, we have donated prizes for the Ultimate National Sewing Month giveaway, which is hosted by Shannon Fabrics. The grand prize pack is worth over $1,000 and is packed with sewing, quilting, and embroidery goodies. Entr entry to the contest is free. Just enter your name into the drawing with the form on the Ultimate National Sewing Month blog. And Trevor is going to add that link in the comments and description. Note that the contest is open only to makers in the continental U.S., but we want to wish a very happy National Sewing Month to all. To celebrate and to say thank you for joining us, we have a really fun giveaway today. So I went to pull stuff today and remembered that I had stuck it in this bag last week, so it was all nice and handy. So our winner today is going to receive our Open Wide 2.0 pattern, which includes a coupon to get the add-on video free, a one-yard package of Biani's Soft and Stable, a 24-inch single slide, and a 30-inch double slide zipper, a package of Biani's Lightweight Mesh, and two packages of Biani's Fold Over Elastic. And that is enough to make all three sizes of the Open Wide bags. As you can see, Open Wide is quite similar to um, Take a Stand, but it doesn't have the pockets on the outside or the carrying strap, but comes in three sizes from small to large, and they're perfect for so many uses and they really make great gifts. Again, remember that Soft and Stable comes in black and white, Mesh and Fold Over Elastic come in 14 fun colors, and 24 and 30 inch zippers come in 48 fabulous colors. So if you have a preference for colors, please let Trevor know when he reaches out to let you know that you won. And here's what you need to do to win. And remember, you have to do this on Facebook. It doesn't work on YouTube if you're watching us there. So the first thing we ask you to do is leave a comment. Tell us maybe something you learned in today's presentation. If you have tips to share for choosing colors for fabrics and supplies, we'd love to hear them. Um, which Biani pattern that we showed today would you like to make next? Do you have favorite colors of Biani zippers, mesh, or fold over elastic? We'd also love it if you'd let us know where you are joining us from. Uh, we love seeing all the countries and states that are represented each week, so let us know where you're watching from. And of course, we always also enjoy learning about any special tips you have or ideas for new patterns. Next, we ask you to tag a friend. We want to spread the word about our weekly Facebook Live, and so please share this with someone who you think might enjoy it. And to tag someone, just type the at symbol followed by the name they use on Facebook. Their name and picture will pop up so you can confirm you've got the right pe person. If you do, click on that, add your comment, and submit it. We are going to pick winners from comments made by Midnight Mountain Time tonight, so you have a little over nine more hours to watch and comment. And finally, remember to check your Facebook messages. Trevor is going to notify our winner and ask you to email him your shipping address. And when you do that, you can also let him know which color of soft and stable, zippers, mesh, and fold over elastic you prefer. So thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We will be back next week at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with a really fun episode of Live with Annie. Our focus next, will be, next week will be on projects for babies and kids, as well as new parents and grandparents. We'll also be sharing some tips for sewing with Minky Fabric and showing lots of brand new models so you won't want to miss it. See you then. <laughs>